Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 10-day challenge. I call this the 2020 Fall Call of the Carbs, because you know what's coming up. We have Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, all carb-loaded holidays. And I know you because you think, oh, we're going to have a ton of kids, so I'm going to go ahead and buy candy today. And then by the time the kids come, you have to go buy more candy because you ate it. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of start this at this time of the year. The other thing is that I always recommend if you're going to get Halloween candy, don't get it till the day before. There always will be enough. And we'll talk about that as we go on. So tonight we're going to be starting to so officially start tomorrow. Uh, the 10 day challenge. So there's a couple of things that we're going to do here as you're going to look at um, a beginning a new wellness journey. And I always like to say it begins today. For me, I always tell patients eating is a choice. And it's either whatever you put in your mouth is either an act of nutrition, and I know this sounds terrible, or an act of suicide. So I always encourage you to make good choices. Nobody, I don't see anybody in here getting force fed here. So we all make those choices. So your challenge is going to be to follow some good eating guidelines. That's we're going to focus on whole foods, unprocessed foods like real vegetables, real fruits, and lean protein. We're going to avoid refined carbohydrates, artificial sweeteners, uh, chemical additives, any processed meats, fried foods, caffeine, or soft drinks. Um, you're going to use a supplement shake that's a, a vegetable protein or a detox powder with uh, whole food ingredients, and you can mix that with either water or some type of nut milk. Uh, and then you're going to take a simple protocol of supplementation to deal with either inflammation, blood sugar, or detoxification exclusively. Uh, and honestly, you could lose 10 pounds in 10 days. That's your real challenge. So you may not be doing this for a weight management issue, but I know most of you um, have those concerns as well, but it also will help to reduce inflammation, whether we're doing sugar or whether we're doing inflammation or whether we're doing detox. So here we're going to get started tonight. So this will kind of give you some idea. If you've already done it before and you want to officially start today, you're, you've already done that. But most of you will be starting tomorrow. So here's how we start. So you want to look in your kitchen tonight. You want to get rid of some of those foods that are not on the, the program, on your food list. You should have gotten a book. If you don't have a book, type it in the chat and we will email you a copy of the book or you can come by the office and get a copy of the book. You should have gotten one with your kit. So we're going to remove any foods that are high in refined sugars, any fats, any carbohydrates. We're going to stock your pantry uh, by going shopping for vegetables, proteins, fruits, and other items that are on that food list. Uh, we're going to be prepared with a few days worth of meals on your hand. I always say that don't buy a whole week's worth of stuff for two reasons. One, I've done this long enough that even now my um, taste buds change, you know, sometimes middle of the, the 10 day where I when I first started, I ate collard greens almost every day. I loved collard greens. Right now, I can hardly really eat them because I ate them so much the first time. So I try to do, we try to do that here at the house, three or four days of foods that we know we're going to eat and uh, or something that we can freeze and have for later. Uh, so we're making sure a pantry stock and meal prep is so important. Always have a couple little things in the background, some salads made, some vegetables cut, some guacamole prepared. Uh, and there's things, uh, hummus that you can have that'll be clean that you can use on the detox, but look at your ingredients and have those ready for yourself for a snack. Um, fruit, remember, it's going to be high in sugar. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I, I'd rather you spend your money on your vegetables and your, your whole foods, uh, whole nutrition foods, whole high, the fruits, I call them nutrition dense, fiber rich and nutrition dense. So if we have those foods, we eat them, we don't really get hungry. And then making some simple lifestyle changes. I want you to get a little more sleep, at least six to seven hours, minimum six hours. The six to eight hours is a range for those of us that are adults. Um, no sitting for very long periods of time and getting more than 10,000 10, steps in a day. And if you have a Fitbit and some, you all have devices, if you have a cell phone, it already has a pedometer built in. So you just put it in your pocket. Um, I use the Aura ring. So it's a little ring with little... Um, sensors in it that uh, calculates all that for me. Um, so you have all kinds of devices you can do. So Fitbit, you know, I don't care what you wear, just find something. And if you don't want to buy something, use your phone, it's already built in. So getting the 10,000 steps, that's five miles. That doesn't mean you have to do it all at once. And if you have your Fitbit or anything right now, and you only have six or 7,000 steps, you, after we get done with this class, you've got some busy work to do. So keep, keep going. All right. So I really like to create a successful journey. And that's why I teach this class, because if, if I just hand you the kit and say, go, 
you know, go, you know, go in peace and eat well. It's not going to help you if you're not motivated or you feel like you don't know what to do. And my, my, for me, I guess I see the most of my patients, they think they're doing the right thing and they want to do the right thing. But when we have a conversation about it, they're starting their day with yogurt and fruit and a banana and orange juice, which really boils down to being all sugar. So we want to kind of clean the system out of all that sugar and get your body operating on uh, leaner and cleaner fuels. So even when we rode this weekend, I rode a uh, uh, century on Friday, but of course it's hundred miles. I rode hundred miles on Saturday and then I rode a metric century was 63 miles on Sunday, but my fuel really didn't change. I didn't eat any of the junk food there. And plus I made sure that we had healthy food at all the rest stops. So we had watermelon and frozen grapes uh, there was a cookie that was baked by, uh, from a recipe by the uh, Miami uh, Heat sports nutritionist that was low in sugar. It was actually salted with soy sauce. Um, it wasn't too sweet. It was just right, but it was enough to fuel the body for those long hours on the bike. So for your successful journey, I'm not asking you to ride 100 miles. I'm asking you to walk 10,000 steps. So I'm, I'm cutting you some slack. So we're going to eat. So you want to eat frequently throughout the day, especially if this is new to you. Um, that'll help maintain your blood sugar level. I do intermittent fasting. You may be doing intermittent fasting and that's fine. If you're already doing it, you can continue doing. If you're not, let's start this way first. Eat your meals frequently and that'll help that blood sugar keep balanced. Uh, you want to eat, my big number one rule is eat twice as many vegetables as fruits. Um, this increases your fiber and your antioxidants. And plus, when we think about um, vegetables to fruit, the only difference in nutrition is the sugar. So the vegetables have less sugar and they have more fiber. The fruit has fiber to it, yes, indeed, and it has all the vitamins. But if you're eating a rainbow of vegetables, you're getting all the vitamins you need. Uh, you're gonna add in like a mixed green salad with your lunch and your dinner. Um, try some different veggies that you never tried. Look, I look at, like to do the colors of the rainbow, like um, you know, yellow squashes, and, and there's so many different things that are available out there to you to, to try. So um, try one. And if you wanna do frozen, I'm certainly okay with that as well. Uh, for me is, you know, sometimes we get home from work at six and we're hungry. We always have some frozen vegetables ready for us. Uh, we're doing the 21 day right now, since we have, um, since this is my birthday month, I always do the 21 day starting October 1st. Um, my, my birthday is the 22nd. So I always finish always feeling fabulous. So it's my present to myself and I don't mess it up in one day either. So um, and then drinking water. So divide your body weight in half. That's kind of what you want to look at. Remember, you're going to get you're going to get water or liquid in your shakes and in your vegetables as well. So um, you don't have don't have to force drink. I always recommend getting some type of container that you can fill up for the day and drink out of it. I do a lot of that at night. I have a bottle right by my bed, so I drink throughout the night because I exercise in the morning. So um, please keep yourself hydrated. Remember your muscles are 75% water. So if you're not drinking enough, you're dehydrated, that can cause muscle cramping and muscle weakness. So we've talked about toxins before. Um, and you know, I always say our body, we're, our body has more wiring than the space shuttle, but we drive it around like a garbage truck. So if you don't have a, a time to be able to, um, take care of your body, uh, where are you going to live? That's my, uh, my biggest factor in all that is that, you know, we have a, this amazing body that we make, we, we don't have to think about our heart beating and we don't have to think about picking our foot up and putting it down and picking it up and putting it down. It's all an innate intelligence inside of us. And then we feed our bodies crap and then we get mad when it breaks down on us. So just, just uh, you know, acknowledge that your body is a very amazing thing. So we want to feed it well. So the unfortunate part is that we are exposed to toxins both inside our bodies, outside our bodies, exogenous and endogenous. And when I talk about like uh, the exogenous the outside the body, I mean, I'm talking about going into a new uh, building that has new carpet that's laid down. You're gonna get formaldehyde off the carpet. You can't help it. You just go to the new place. If you drive a car and you smell gas fumes from other vehicles or diesel from other vehicles when you're inside your car, that's a toxin, you're breathing that in. Think about when you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth, what kind of toothpaste do you use? How many chemicals are in that? What kind of hairspray do you use? What kind of shampoo do you use? Is your water chlorinated as it comes out? So we are exposed to so many things. And we do have a three-part three, three part system to take care of that. But our body just was never designed to manage what we get, uh, we, uh, our body gets assaulted with. When I go out for a ride early in the morning, there'll be nobody out 
uh, obviously, uh, when I'm out there. So I leave the house about quarter to quarter to seven. So it's just now a little bit dark. So I can't see anybody. I don't see any cars. Nobody. You see people up in their in their houses, but you don't see any people out. And I can smell cigarette smoke. If you can smell it, you're breathing it in. So just be aware of those things. So also, you know, our body has to has its own ammonia and it makes its own different um, um, endogenous toxins that we have to get rid of. So that three part system, the phase one unlocks it. So it makes it readily available to be metabolized. But the problem with that first phase is it is as it unlocks it, it makes the toxins that are already toxic, even more toxic. So then a phase two comes in to help neutralize that. And then phase three is the elimination phase. It takes all those water, it makes the phase, the neutralizing phase makes it water soluble. And then the phase three eliminates it by urine, by breath, by feces. So like I said, we have that system built in, but during the, the 10 day program, it's really to heighten the activity of your liver. Your liver is such an important feature in your body. Now, it, the function of it, there are over 600 functions, known functions, and they believe there's probably close to 700 uh, that are functions of the liver. And when people put on weight and we put that belly, wet, belly fat around there, that's our liver being congested. So that's all the more reason to start with a, a metabolic detox like this. So here's how our body's inundated. You know, even, you know, if you have, if you burn a candle, or if you have a plug in, um, you know, we don't have a lot of um, air pollution here, but you know, other areas do your, your pesticides, your insecticides. If you're my neighbor spray their yard. So we're exposed to that. And how many of you remember, well, if you lived in Florida as a kid, we thought it was so cool to ride our bikes behind the mosquito fogging truck. Brilliant. So we're lucky as kids, we're still alive. So we've done all these things all our life. So we have to do things to make ourselves better. So this is why I do these programs. This is why I educate you because I really want you to be well. I want you to live well. I want you not to be 90 years old drooling on yourself in a wheelchair. I want you to be able to get out there, rock, roll, slam, hit the wall and say, damn, what a good ride. I, I'm not going to tiptoe through my death. Now, obviously, most of you that know me know that I have not. So toxins are everywhere. We know this. Um, but toxins can contribute, contribute to a lot of things, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, indigestion, food cravings, reduced mental clarity, low libido, skin issues, and joint discomfort. 80,000 of those um, registered uh, chemicals by the FDA, they are registered for use. Uh, 800 million pounds of herbicides are used per year and 167 industrial chemicals are found in the bloodstream, bloodstreams of people that are not even in the industry of those. So things like glyphosate, which is what they, which is what Roundup is. The, the farmers are taught in wheat school to kill their wheat first with Roundup so that it doesn't mold. But we're getting that, that you know, glyphosate in our systems. So, you know, the cows eat it, then we eat it. So we eat, if, if you eat the cow, you eat what they ate. So that's how we also get it. That's why I'm so picky about when I tell you to get grass-fed, grass-finished, free-range eggs, you know, wild-caught salmon, and, and make sure you get your vegetables that are, we have plenty of places in Florida that you can get vegetables almost year-round. And you know that the local farmers that are uh, organic farmers, they're so proud of their product, and I like to support them. So we, were, we had a um, community share program, and so we, on Sundays we go pick up our, our bag of our bounty, and they would fresh pick everything there. Well, the lettuces and stuff would last almost two weeks. And Mary and I were talking about it. And she goes, why is that? And I'm like, well, think about it. When we get stuff at, you know, Publix or wherever you shop, it, it's been driven to the place to pack it. And then it's been shipped in a truck to wherever, to the distribution center. Then the distribution center sends it to the stores. And then by the time we get it, it's probably a week and a half old already. So that's why it doesn't last very long. So try to buy local support our local farmers. So we have uh, the, on the challenge, we have three different um, challenges. I, I kind of focus on blood sugar, uh, but I have some folks doing the inflammation program and uh, the detox balance. So the blood sugar has uh, products, uh, the Veggie Pro Shake, the SP Cleanse, the Diaplex and the Gymnema, we'll go through those. And then the SP Complete, Veggie Pro for the inflammation, SP Cleanse, Cyruta Plus, Boswellia Complex. And they just started switching the turmeric forte in 
Um, but I do like the Boswellia complex for the inflammation program. And then once you're finished with the inflammation program, I, I encourage you to do the turmeric forte just as a maintenance. And then the black currant seed oil, the detox balance, everything's mixed in the shake. So you just have to do the shake, but you have to do the shake. So uh, I, I've done all of these. Um, I like them all, the detox balance shake. I just sometimes one shake for me is not good enough in a day. So if you don't want to have to do more than one shake a day, then the detox balance is probably not for you. So we use a veggie pro chocolate or vanilla. We use the SP complete with the whey protein. There's SP complete dairy free. Most of you are using the veggie pro complete. Uh, so these are essential whole food nutritions. They're in a convenient powder. I use the veggie pro vanilla every day. That's just part of my routine of getting enough plant-based protein in. Um, it support gives you the amino acids you need, your essential fatty acids and many other vitamins. Also helps with your intestinal and muscular immune systems. Uh, and it also provides antioxidant activity, supports your liver, supports your elimination of toxins, and helps to maintain a healthy weight you know, when you're on a, main, a kind of a weight maintenance target. But for me as an athlete, I love it because it's quick and easy. Sometimes I don't, I'm not hungry. I can mix up a shake and kind of sip on it all afternoon. So the key ingredients in that, the shake powder. So the barley grass is one, um, cause you're not going to go out and eat barley grass. I know this already, um, rice, buckwheat, and flax. Um, these are all, you know, wonderful things, but we're just not going to go out and eat them. Uh, alfalfa is another one. Um, we just, you know, I fed it to the horses. I love the way it smelled, but I just don't eat it, but it's good for us. Um, and then the veggie pro complete, the vanilla, vanilla and chocolate. So that provides the building blocks of your proteins that we call amino acids that help support healthy muscle and tissue maintenance. And it has sesame seed, pumpkin seed, and yellow pea seed protein, which provides that plant-based protein. <clears throat> the SP cleanse, which is both in the blood, um, the blood sugar and the inflammation, it's also included in the, the detox, um, detox balance. Uh, they have a detox balance has a chai flavor and it has a, a no flavor because it's kind of hard to hide that black Spanish black radish that's in there. But the SP cleanse is pretty amazing. It's really the key for pushing us into that phase two uh, detoxification, which is taking those highly toxic um, toxins in our body that have been made more toxic to get them to neutralize so they can, can be eliminated. So it supports your liver, your kidney, and your gallbladder function. It encourages healthy digestion, uh, supports normal elimination of toxins, and just pr promotes normal, uh, excuse me, healthy elimination. So the Spanish black radish. So I was at the farm, maybe it was 2019 with their, was their 50th year. And so they had, they pulled black radish. That's what you see there. That was my picture from the from the farm and they had it there and they had it cut up for us to taste. Let me just tell you what, it's powerful. I mean, it's like a red radish or, a, or even a horseradish on steroids. So, I mean, it'll burn your nostrils kind of like wasabi, but it's one of the key factors in pushing us to the, that phase two. So it really supports that enzyme activity in liver to get our detoxification started. And the reason why, you know, I talk about span, uh, standard processes, as you know, I mean, it's, whole food based, it's organic. You know, most of the products are gluten-free. We have vegan products. We, we have something to meet everybody. My patients say, well, I can't do that because I'm vegan. I'm like, got you covered. I can't do that because I'm gluten-free. I got you covered. So there's no if, ands, or buts. I, this is all about whole food nutrition, uh, foods that are nutrition rich and fiber dense. So just in a black Spanish black radish, I mean, you have over 60% of all of your raw plant ingredients that go into our the products in the farm come from their farm. So that's what's really cool. I've touched the soil. It's just a, an amazing experience. And this is Christine Mason. She's the farm manager. Um, she's an amazing woman. And this is, they had the beets all cut up for us. So we had turnip, red beet. These are all things they grow in the farm. Uh, so you can see what the farm looks like. They were growing some uh, pea protein in order to, um, to re uh, put uh, new nitrogen into the, the field. So uh, that, that was really cool. All right. So Marianne just said, I'm still on. You cannot see my slides. Oh, wait, I see it. Hold on. All right. Can we see the slides now? Okay, so 
you're on toxin slide. Oh, I am so sorry. Well, I'm going to finish this and I'll re-record it. So let's just go on. So anyway, this is the, the farm. We haven't done that. So I'm just going to go back here. Marianne, was this where I stopped? Okay. So toxins are everywhere. And I've already you've heard me say all this, so I'm not going to say it again, but I'll just kind of show you the slides here. Uh, the products, we've talked about all these things. You just didn't get to see all the pretty pictures. But I will re-record it in the morning and I'll send it to you. So I'll have, or I'll probably record it tonight just so it's done. So we're here at the farm. All right. So the, the farm is amazing. That's Christine Mason. Uh, she's the farm manager. She and her husband run the farm. And they don't need a lot of people because they don't do a lot of, they, they grow in um, uh, different areas at different times. They, they uh, share their crops and they rotate their crops. And that's the, the picture of the pea protein. And that re-nitrogenizes the soil. They handpick weeds. They have bird, bird and bee barriers. Uh, they bought all the property around the farm so they don't get overspray. And, you know, it's just an amazing, um, amazing place to be because everybody feels good there. The people that work there are so happy. And to me, I, if you have a happy workplace, they're making a happy product and we're getting the benefit of that. So the SP uh, cleanse ingredients, uh, the juniper berry, the red clover flower, apple pectin, burdock root, barley grass, organ root seed, uh, grape root. So one of my patients say, oh, I can't have my wine. No, but I'm giving it to you here. So take it, take it how you get it. And then fenugreek seed. So uh, cholesterol metabolism is really important with the fenugreek seed. The organ, organ grape root supports your normal bowel transit, normal immune system action, and skin health. Barley grass feeds the body with vitamins B and C, minerals, iron, and magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, potassium. And they're very phytonutrients are, uh, that are supportive. Um, one just to, to say is beta carotene. So we've got a lot of benefits from the SP cleanse, but like I said, that um, Spanish black radish is probably the big key for this one. Now the blood sugar program, the gymnema is probably the biggest factor. And if you have a sweet tooth, uh, it works wonderfully by kind of taking the sugar taste away. So I don't do this to patients because I won't give you that kind of stuff, but I'll do it to doctors, doctors, because they know better. So when, um, we, we do in a class, I'll have, give the doctors, a. a uh, gymnema. I'll have them suck on it till they get the taste of it because we have a brain, um, you know, taste buds connection. And so the brain then knows, oh, this is a, an herb and it starts to realize what it is. I have them swallow it. Then I give them a Hershey kiss. When they put the Hershey kiss in their mouth, it tastes like chocolate, kind of like a chocolatey mud that you can taste all the stuff that doesn't taste good in it. So it completely takes away the sugar taste. So I always tell patients to have two containers of it. And when they're not on the program, that way they finish one container and a half of one, and then just keep a half up in the cabinet. So if you start getting a little sugar craving, you can start right back on it. So this works wonderfully. It's an herb um, and no medications that anybody is on will this affect. I use the products in the programs that are not contraindicated. So I, I'm careful with my herbs. So it works really well to help maintain that blood sugar level, uh, which may be already in normal range, but also helps to maintain normal cholesterol levels. So it's got a kind of double bang for the buck there. Diaplex is another one. This is really a key. It really helps for healthy sh uh, sugar handling. So I use this with my patients that are diabetic to help kind of manage their diabetes and encourages healthy blood sugar levels and helps to uh, keep them within a range, uh, combining them with a healthy diet. But you can't do one without the other. So you have to have, be able to eat well. You can't expect to do this and then eat like crap and have it work. That's not how any of this works. But it has chromium. That's really important for a carbohydrate metabolism, uh, supports a healthy function of your pancreas, healthy function of your bowel and your gallbladder. And it has a combination of things. Anything in the standard process line that, says that has a plex on the end means it's a combination. So it has a digestive enzyme built in. It has a ton of beets and beets are, uh, beet leaves, which are really good for metabolism and gallbladder, pituitary, which helps the body regulate the endocrine system, and pancreatrophin, which helps to manage the pancreas. That way you're not taking like 30 different things. You have one, you know, a couple pills and they're all built in. So if you're doing the blood sugar program, this is what your schedule looks like. You'll be doing a, a shake three times a day. If you're doing the Veggie Pro, it'll be four scoops because it's a little bit lighter powder. Um, and you don't have to do three shakes. People that have never done the program kind of think I'm going to die. I'm not getting enough food. So I'm going to have the three shakes. 
I usually do one shake a day. And you can either mix it in a blender bottle or you can make a shake on with a, a Nutribullet and put some kale and some blueberries. And, you know, uh, we put uh, chia seeds, uh, sesame seed, flax seed, and turmeric in. I'm trying to blend a bunch of stuff in there. So it may not be a pretty color, but it tastes good. And then so on breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you'll take five capsules of the SP Cleanse. You'll take five capsules of the Diaflex three times a day. And then you'll take the Gymnema, two tablets in the morning, one tablet at lunch, one tablet at dinner. <clears throat> this goes on for the 10 days. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's necessary to really create this effect that we want to have. Remember, these are all whole food based, so I'm not giving you any junk. The inflammation program, the you'll do the SP cleanse and the shake, but you'll also, instead of the other two, you'll do the Cyruta Plus. That helps with the capillary in, in, integrity and its function. Also helps with cholesterol, cholesterol transport. Manage that cellular glucose. Uh, also helps with peripheral circulation and helps the really the maintain the integrity of capillary walls. Inflammation is due to the arteries being inflamed, and that can be from diet as well. So that's why the diets are very similar. Uh, Boswellia complex, like I said, the new program now wants you to use turmeric. I like the Boswellia for the inflammation program because it has a bunch of different things. So it's a, it's a complex. It has Boswellia, celery seed, ginger, and turmeric. And so these phytochemicals are super important on really balancing that um, inflammatory process. And they all kind of work together so that it supports the kidneys, it supports the joints, supports healthy circulation, and has, provides a lot of uh, phytonutrients for antioxidant activity. Then also black currant seed oil. So that's your essential fatty acids, your gamma linolenic acids, and that encourages the proper eicosanoid synthesis, supports your body's tissue repair, um, uh, keep your normal blood flow, and also supports your healthy immune uh, function. So your schedule looks like this. So you do the shakes either three times a day, one time a day, two times a day. I recommend doing a shake in the morning and then maybe have a shake at lunch. And if you're still hungry after dinner, then you can have another shake. I want you eating food. You're not just drinking shakes the whole time. <clears throat> you could use the breakfast one as a replacement meal. I have no problem with that. Um, and you could even use breakfast and lunch as long as you're doing a nice dinner. And if you really are working on weight management, that would be the best way to do it. If you want to lose a few extra LBs there, okay? So you do the five capsules of the SP, com, com, sorry, SP cleanse, five capsules three times a day. The Boswellia complex is one tablet three times a day. The Cyruta Plus is three tablets three times a day. And the black currency oil is two pearls twice a day, three times a day. So that if you're doing the SP detox program, I think I only have one person doing that. It's the powder, everything is mixed in. So um, you, I know you, who's doing it. So you know what to do, uh, two scoops a day. Uh, two shakes a day, each, each one scoop of each in the shake. So it contains your pea isolates, your pumpkin concentrate, your oat flour. So it has everything built in, but you have to have the powder and the shake to get all the detoxification properly. So if you miss a, a, a shake, that's it's not you're not going to get the, the full benefit of it. So that's why for me I like to do the other one because I I just like to do maybe one shake a day. Uh, so all these programs are easy, safe. You know you can mix things on the go. You don't have to make a fancy one. A blender bottle with a little metal ball in there, that's fine. If you want to mix it up in a uh, Nutribullet, that's fine. If you need uh, any type of recipe, just let us know. You can either email uh, Tina or Marianne and they will get that information to you. So on the 10-day program food list, now let's talk about the food you're going to be eating because it's not just about shakes. So it should be on page 15. I know the new book came out and I Thought I had one here, but I do not. So I will have one next week, but I believe it's page 15. It tells you the serving size for your vegetables is half a cup. Your target serving is 13 to 15 servings per day. That's a lot. I can't even eat that much, but you have the ability to eat that much food. So if you feel like you're hungry, eat more of that. And the key for eating those foods that are, that are nutrition rich and fiber dense is that they fill you up and they're giving your body the nutrients it needs. When you're hungry and you eat something that is not good for you, like a Snickers bar, you eat that. And then afterwards you want another one because your body's saying, Hey, you fed me, but I'm still hungry because you didn't really feed me nutrition rich and fiber dense foods. 
So then you need another Snickers bar and then you start a whole cascade of events happening. So when the foods are nutrition rich and fiber dense, then your body gets the nutrition it needs and it gets full and it gets satiated. So it doesn't want any more. Starchy vegetables, you'll be able to have them, but we're gonna limit them. When we think starch, we think sugar. So we wanna watch that, that blood sugar as well from the carbohydrates from that. Half a cup and limit that to one serving per day on the 10 day program. Page 16 is the fruit serving size, half a cup. I would only want you to use it in your shakes. It's too easy to grab a handful of grapes and next thing you know, the whole bunch is gone. Um, no bananas because bananas are very high in sugar. And we'll talk about that a little bit on Monday. Um, but stick with your berries. Berries are low in the glycemic index. And these are really fiber rich. Blueberries are amazing. And if you uh, were lucky enough to get frozen blueberries from King's Organics uh, this year, we have, uh, I'm embarrassed to say I bought two boxes. I didn't realize they were gonna be 25 pound boxes. So we gave a lot away, but we have a bunch in the freezer. Uh, but that's good to throw a handful of those berries in. Or if you feel like you need a snack at night, a handful of frozen berries is also good. Your protein serving size is three ounces. Three ounces about the size of your palm, two to three servings per day. Uh, you're miscellaneous serving. And so when we talk about protein, remember lean meats, uh, I like grass-fed, grass-finished beef, uh, or if you have bison, or if you have um, uh, venison, any wild game that you know is wild-caught, uh, wild-caught salmon, any of your fish that's wild-caught, uh, your free-range chickens, not cage-free, uh, free-range eggs, not cage-free, because that means they're cage-free, it means you're just in a big building then they maybe can see down daylight. So they're just all kind of grouped together. So we want them outside with Dr. Sunshine and eating the bugs and eating the grass like they're really supposed to. Uh, miscellaneous serving size is two teaspoons, three to four servings per day. We wanna get those good fats in there because those are also satiate us. Our body can use fat as a fuel better than it can sugar. And then your beverages, I will allow you to have coffee but you can't put your fancy creamers in. If you, you know, want to put uh, MCT oil and do like a, a bulletproof coffee, I'm okay with that. Uh, if you don't know what bulletproof coffee is, uh, ask in the chat. Miriam will be monitoring that. Uh, she can answer all your questions. Um, and also, uh, you can, uh, so bulletproof coffee is um, coconut oil or MCT, which is medium chain triglycerides uh, or fatty acids and uh, butter. And you mix it up and that kind of makes like a cream. Uh, so you can have your green teas and I'll let you have coffee on this one. Now in 21 day, no caffeine. I, I'm a little bit harsher on that because I don't, I really want you to make a, a good cleanse. This is a 10 day kind of kick your system up, get your metabolism going, lose some weight. So your vegetables, you've got a lot of choices. You can do fresh homemade vegetable juices are acceptable, but I would stay away from things like carrot juice because it's high in sugar. So you don't wanna put apples in it or anything like that. So if you're gonna do a juice and you wanna do um, celery juice, go for it. Just don't do too much because too much is not good either. Um, no white potatoes, no corn, you know, the starchy vegetables that you don't really wanna incorporate. And those are mostly genetically modified anyway. So we wanna stay away from those. So remember fruits, no fruit juices. You can only eat the fruit and I would stick with berries, especially if, especially if you are on a weight management program. If you're not, don't need to lose weight, you can have a small banana, banana a day. And I'm not talking the big bananas. We have a banana palm and, and the little bananas are about that big. And I even, when we do those, we peel them, break them in half and freeze them. Only use a piece of the banana. because so you just want the flavor and it gives you a little bit of sweetness. So on your meats, make sure they're not um, cold cuts. I don't want sausages, uh, you know, uh, tube steaks or um, hot dogs, as we, we call them tube steaks as kids. Any, uh, you can do canned fish and seafood. Make sure the labels on the can say BPA free. That's a whole nother lecture. Uh, farm raised, you know, all those kind of things we don't want, we want to stay away from. And you can broil it, bake it, roast it, or poach it. Um, avoid dairy. You can have eggs as long as they're free range. No sodas, diet sodas, fruit juices, energy drinks, sport drinks, no alcohol. I let you have coffee and you can have herbal and non-herbal teas and no caffeinated drinks. Um, I suggest if you like, if you're a soda person, maybe get the, the bubbly waters or the um, LaCroix waters. Those are satisfying. They don't have sugar in them, but they give you a little bubbly and a little bit of flavor. Uh, but look on your packaging so that it says no BPA on that, okay? If you have food allergies and the foods are on the list, doesn't mean you're not gonna be allergic to it. So if you know you have an aller allergy to avocados, please don't eat them. Uh, you should know your body well enough now. 
So avocados are good to include, chia seeds. These are all your good oils. If you have canola oil in your house, get rid of it. If you have vegetable oil of any kind, get rid of it. If you have um, like a sunflower oil, you can use it uh, as long as it says expeller pressed and organic. And especially your coconut oil has to be expeller pressed and organic. And if you're going to use your... Um, for your shakes, I, I, I suggest that any kind of nut milk, if you're not allergic to nuts, um, as long as it's not sweetened, uh, but I would stay away from your oat milk and your soy milk and your rice milks because it's gonna be higher in carbohydrates. So the nut milks are a little bit better to metabolize and, and not uh, kick up your uh, glucose. So this is what your plate will look like during the challenge. So it's been a lot of vegetables, a little bit of protein, and then the rest is gonna be your fats that are the good fats in there and a little bit of fruit. So, well, you know, why is sugar so dangerous? So let's, let's talk about that for a few minutes because I think that's, uh, everybody knows a little bit, but sometimes we don't know all of it. So I wanna always go over this because I think the, you know, you, you may have heard it last time, but it may not have stuck. So Department of Health and Human Services says the average American eats a, uh, equivalent of 42 teaspoons of sugar a day. Can you imagine just seeing what 42 teaspoons looks like? And it's mostly in your table sugars, your baked goods and sugary drinks. And then all the fat-free food, you know, they took all the fat out, which really gave it flavor and keep you, keeps you satiated. And they just loaded it back up with sugar. So that's the other you know, problem we have today. So and the big result of this is a big sugar addiction and sugar is, you know, more addictive than cocaine. So if you eat and drink foods that are high in sugar, you get that drug-like effect, just like cocaine. Uh, and you want you get some and you want more. It's like if you eat that Snicker bar, you're going to have another one. If you eat that Halloween candy and you buy Reese cups, you're going to have not one, you're going to have not two, not three, but until they're gone. So when we look at the, the Journal of uh, Clinical Nutrition and Metabolic Care, it says that sugar appears to have a drug-like effect, which are uh, just like those that are caused by addictive drugs. So that's pretty scary. When, and it's legal. You, know, you can go up to Walgreens up the street from our house. And the whole aisle, you know, there's a whole two-sided aisle full of Halloween candy. If we're not eating it by, you know, Halloween morning, most of that stuff is gone. Somebody's eating that. And not all the kids are eating it because we hardly get any trick-or-treaters. I think it's the adult secret trick-or-treaters, you know, hiding the candy in their home. We know who we are. So addiction-like effects may include cravings, loss of self-control. Um, the research indicates that the average uh, cravings for sugar may be even stronger than those for certain drugs like cocaine. That's always really scary to me. And, but what sugar uh, effects are there? I mean, what, what, so what? We're addicted to it. Well, it decreases cognition. And what do we do to our kids? We feed them sugary cereals before they go to school. Or I see moms buy um, yogurt, go-gurt and stuff like that. It's just loaded with sugar, trying to write, do the right thing. And even the heart healthy cereals, they're trying to do the right thing, but we're loading up our kids with sugar. So we're setting them up for failure basically. So that high soup, you know, sugar diet and leads to impaired cognition uh, and impairs your just your normal brain function. Um, creates tension. So when you reach for a sugar retreat to increase your energy, it really zaps your energy, and increases your tension. So it defeats the whole purpose. So people think, oh, I need to drink a Coke to get more energy. Well, no, if you would eat, you know, an apple or a handful of carrots or radishes dipped in guacamole, that would serve you better. Or even a little bit of protein would manage your blood sugar. So, you know, if go for, go for a walk, those are simple things you can do. And, you know, research has shown that, yeah, walk is better or somebody chose fruit or vegetable as a, even if they chose fruit, even though there's sugar in it, it still is a better choice than, you know, some type of processed sugar. So, you know, keep that in your, your mindset. Depression, too much sugar is a big contributing factor to depression. And think about our world today. I mean, not only do we have digestive issues that our immune systems are, you know, are being destroyed because our guts are bad, our, our large intestine is our immune system. So then you throw the sugar in there and all that does is feeds the bad bacteria, then creates a kind of snowball effect. So um, it really puts us in a bad place. Uh, you know, when you, you come across somebody in the store and they, you know, it's always funny to me when drivers go by us when we're on the bikes and they're so angry, it's like, Oh, why are you so angry? You know, you know, they probably, you know, stopped at McDonald's and not nothing against McDonald's, but they probably stopped at, you know, a fast food place and have crappy fuel in their body and the body's mad at them too. So depression is a big factor. Um, the higher rates of sugar are higher rates of depression. Um, higher intake of natural sugars like fruits did not 
get associated with that higher depression. So I'm not saying you can't have fruit, just on this 10 day program, just limit it. And then if you're on a weight management program, you definitely want to limit the sugar because we're trying to get rid of that. So dementia, this is another big one. You know, we're having so many issues today with dementia, Alzheimer's and all those things. And this is a big factor. Um, you know, it's a psychological, genetic and a nutritional element that are play a, port, play a big role in all this. Um, and now the Journal of uh, Gerontology says that excess sugar is what the, causes dementia in animals. Uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of, kind of scary. The buildup of that beta amyloid protein in the brain that's get there's, there's sorry disrupts the normal function, and then they contributed that to the um, insulin effect of that sugar. So stay away from the sugar. So here's a couple of things that I thought were really interesting uh, to increase you know uh, cognition, education, physical activity, social contact to decrease it. Uh, it's decreased if somebody has hearing problems. So especially people that are aging, they don't get their hearing checked. If they can't hear, they're taking away one of their sources of uh, recognition of hearing people, uh, recognizing sounds, um, hypertension, uh, high blood pressure, obesity, smoking, depression, and diabetes, all these lead to dementia. So um, if we can decrease those, increase those. And I will tell you, all research says the top three things to help decrease dementia are exercise, Number one, number two, fish oil. Number three, diet. And that means getting the sugar out of your diet. So when you do a 10 day blood sugar, you'll notice that you have crystal clear um, focus. You know, if you feel like you're kind of ADD, you're seeing here and then there's a squirrel over here and a squirrel down there. The, I, I find when I do the 21 day, I'm so much more focused and I can get more, more done on it. So that helps me to kind of get back into the groove, even though I, I, we stay pretty good in our household. Yeah, we kind of get a little lazy on some things. It's just human nature and memory. So memory impairment, you know, can develop over a, a variety of diseases, but also lifestyle choices. So uh, the researchers have looked how nutrition and memory are linked and they're, they just pilot published a couple of studies recently on the, in the behavioral neuroscience that said that high sugar consumption negatively affects memory. So there you have it. So this is your brain on sugar and this is your brain on cocaine. You can see that the sugar lights up the brain almost as much, you know, as the uh, cocaine does. So you can see what a normal brain looks like on the far left. And you can see what the cocaine does, but you can see how the, the green area is even, even more highlighted and the yellow area in the middle is getting dark. That's, that's the target area for the um, addictive behavior. So we have a couple of diseases of sugar. These aren't shocking to you, heart disease, obesity, and diabetes. And think of these are the three factors of, you know, of uh, the comorbidities of COVID were people that are, uh, are obese, the people that are diabetic and people that are hypertensive. So this is why you know, we had such a, a, a dramatic effect of COVID because most of our population is, is this. Um, heart disease, number one, you know, we've told everybody stop doing, you know, eggs, don't do this, don't do that. You know, those saturated fats are bad for you. And We've you know been you know kind of brainwashed with that over the years, and that that started. That's a whole lecture. Maybe I'll touch on that next time. But you know, you know they say that, but what if it's wrong? Well, they found out it is wrong. So they really found out that excessive intake of uh, carbohydrates is the major cause of heart disease because it um, is found at the scene, but it's not the perpetrator. So it actually damages the arteries, increases the blood pressure, and ages your organs. That's really scary that it just ages your organs right there. Um, Dr. Steven Sinatra, who's a cardiologist for many, many years, wrote this book. And it's a book that anybody can read, but he really shows you what, you know, they're like, what? oops, we made a mistake. So if they, you know, he said, if the cholesterol doesn't kill you, he went in to look at that answer. He said, it wasn't the cholesterol, it was the sugar. Eating too much sugar is on the top of the list of damaging our arteries and increasing our cholesterol. So when they give you a statin, they should be saying, cut your carbohydrate intake, less sugar, more nutrition rich and fiber dense foods. So in place of all that sugar, he suggests, you know, look, I'm giving you coffee, I'm giving you coconut oil, I'm giving you tons of vegetables, I'm giving you nuts. Um, I'm limiting the nuts right now for the, um, 
the purification, I mean, the 10 day program, but you can have them afterwards in uh, your meats and tons of vegetables. And I'll even have, let you have butter and cream if, as long as it's real. But we're just trying to get you to stay away from those kind of processed fats for right now. Um, you can use real butter. You can use, if you're gonna use um, something in your coffee, use organic whipping cream. So that's your best fat and your body will absorb. There's no carbohydrates in it. Um, eating things like avocados, olive oil, your extra virgin olive oil, all those things are wonderful for us. <clears throat> Obesity is the number two problem. We have an increase in our sugar consumption. Now, this slide is from 2013. This is a CDC. It just talks about how sugar drives fat storage. It makes the brain thinks, thinks it's hungry and it creates a vicious cycle. Uh, uh, there's two components to fructose is a component of two most popular sugars. One is table sugar, sucrose, and then the other is high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is most known in our soft drinks, our processed foods, which is the bigger factor of causing this obesity that we have in the state. So just look at this map for a second. Now this is 2013. You can see that Mississippi is one of the fattest states. I do this for you, Marianne, love you. Uh, that's where she's from. But you can see that 35% higher now, I want you to just see what's, what's happening here. This is 2020. Look, we've had to add categories to 40% now. Mississippi's still the fattest. But look at these other states all kind of coming into play now. I mean, Florida, even 25 to 30% of our people are overweight or obese. So I just kind of blew it up over here so you can see that. And to me, that's, that's really shocking. And you can look at you know, places like Colorado, and I can understand why they're so low out there. Because I just got back from there a couple of weeks ago, and I mean it's wet, it's beautiful, and people are all outside because the weather is so gorgeous, and there's so many things to do outside besides football games. So in Florida, and this is current data, um, they in 2013 they started this Healthy Weight uh, Florida initiative because they found that in the next 20 years in Florida, just in Florida, obesity is expected to contribute to millions of cases of preventable chronic diseases, such as type two di diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. And now we call Alzheimer's type three diabetes. And that's costing us um, uh, approximate $34 billion, billion with a B. I mean, can you matter, imagine how much money that would be better spent? I mean, why aren't we educating our kids in school? Why aren't they paying for you to be educated on, on this? You know, they're relying for me, the quack, to teach you this stuff. You know, when we could be saving, you know, lives by you know, and not just patching things with a pill. But, you know, it's not standard of care. We're going to give you a statin to lower your cholesterol until, instead of tell you to actually eat healthy. So this is the healthiest weight profile from just Lake County. 2019 is the most current. So it, it says how many adults are healthy weight. So in the, this county, 32.5% are uh, healthy weight, 26 are underweight. Adults overweight or obese, 64.8%. And if we break that down, 32% are overweight, 32.6% are obese. And then look at the meeting the aerobic standards, only 44% do. And I, I love this one down at the bottom here. Adults who consume at least five servings of vegetables a day, less than 20%. So we have a lot of work to do. And then adults who are inactive or insufficiently active, 58%. Here's our problem, folks. Exercise is the number one thing that we can do. You can go on a walk, it doesn't cost you anything. You can lay on the floor, you can go to, you've got things on your apps on your phone for free that give you, a, you know, some type of fitness program. You don't have to join a gym anymore. So don't give me the COVID excuse anymore. You can go to the, uh, you can go to the gym now. And make your gym at home. So here's Orange County. I know some of you are in um, Seminole County and I know I didn't get Cocoa Beach over there, but you can go on just if you type in healthiest weight profile and type in your county, it'll have resources and it shows you right where to go. So in Orange County, 35% are in healthy weight, 62% overall. So that breaks down to 34% overweight, 27% obese. Uh, those who meet aerobic uh, conditions about recommendations about 44%. Uh, the muscle strengthening recommendations, 45%, which is about half of us. Uh, then uh, adults who are inactive or insufficiently active, 56, almost 57%, and 19% uh, 
um, consume five vegetables or fruits a day. That's a little scary. We need to get busy, folks. We've got a lot of work to do here. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> so when we put fat on, it's nothing but a, uh, to keep us warm in the winter. And in Florida, we do not need that. So that brings us to diabetes. So we have type one, we have type two, and we have gestational. Gestational, you only have if you're female and you're pregnant. Type one, you're born with. Type two, you pretty much cause. And like I said, now they're saying that they're calling type three diabetes um, Alzheimer's or, or dementia. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big association with the sugar consumption just in our, in our United States of America. And, you know, instead of teaching our kids to eat better and, and providing good food, school food for them we get them fed junk and that can be a I, that's a whole box you know I, I can stand a soap box I can stand on so the added sugar and the added a fructose corn syrup that's big biggest contributor to the uh, type 2 diabetes which then also is almost always obesity not always but some you know a pretty pretty big significant portion of the population so here's how it works calorie for calorie Sugar causes more insulin resistance in the liver than any other food. The pancreas then has to release more insulin to satisfy the liver's need. And then the high insulin level then in turn interferes with the brain's uh, receipt of signals from a hormone called leptin, which is secreted by fat cells. And then the signals from leptin send a message that the appetite has been satisfied. Well, all that gets skewed. And when it gets skewed, then our brain doesn't know we're full and we want more. So I went to a lecture a couple of years ago, uh, it'd been two years because nobody was doing, we weren't attending lectures. Uh, and this doctor, he's an MD, he's an integrative oncologist. Um, and he was saying, if you're not 100% convinced that consuming sweet, sugary, simple carbohydrate foods is a bad idea for anyone with cancer, take a look at this. As far as I'm concerned, there's absolutely no better image to really drive the point that and make it stick in your mind. So what we're gonna look at is a PET scan which is the best imaging tool available for helping us find cancer hiding in the body. He orders them every day in his practice. And the reason he shows it to everybody is that the PET scan uses sugar, 8 fluorohydroxyglucose um, it's which a radio labeled glucose molecules to highlight the location of the cancer in the body. So this is it. This is all the sugar in the body. And so what we say is uh, that sugar feeds cancer. And I know that's a scary statement to say, but all research kind of backs to that. So instead of waiting till we get sick, my goal with functional medicine is always to keep you well and get you to that place so we don't have these things. But that's pretty, and they did it as a rotating image. I don't have that, but it was just, I mean, it really is just quite shocking. So that's where, where they light it up and that's where all the sugar kind of accumulates. So it's pretty scary. So when we talk about carbs, the fall call, fall call of the carbs. So we have two types of carbs. I know you know this. I'm just reminding you. Healthy carbs and unhealthy carbs. Complex carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. They're found in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, legumes, sweet potatoes, and yams, which we're going to kind of have a little bit of some of those, but not a lot of them because we're just really trying to manage all carbohydrates. The good thing about the healthy carbs, they take longer for the body to process and they help to stabilize blood sugars. They also contain a good source of fiber and they're filled with fiber nutrients, minerals, and vitamins. On the other hand, you have your unhealthy carbohydrates, which we call simple carbohydrates. They break down to sugar fast. It's like taking a five gallon can of gas and just dumping it into your carburetor. They have little to no fiber. They're highly processed foods like uh, cookies and candies, white flour, pasta chips, uh, and large amounts are associated with obesity and chronic disease outcomes. That $34 billion number. And to me, this is, this is a classic. You know, oh, that high carbohydrate diet I put you on 20 years ago gave you diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Oops. So look at this list of um, healthy foods. This is a no-brainer. Now, you may not be having yogurt on the 10-day. That's fine. And I definitely always stay away from your dried fruits. That doesn't mean you can't have them. But for the 10 days, I want you to concentrate on really foods that are nutrition rich and fiber dense. And I mean, to me, that looks fantastic. Or you can poison yourself with these foods. These are your simple carbohydrates. They have, you know, they're the foods we grab the first that are the quickest, but they're the worst for us because they take, they take no time to eat. Well, you think about if you were to eat a carrot, how long it takes you to chew a carrot, 
and or cut a carrot and, and, and you know break it down so that you can swallow it where you can take a bite of a you know donut and it's gone and these are all found that are foods with very few nutrients and they tend to be less satisfying and more fattening so table sugar corn syrup fruit juice candy cake bread made with flour white flour especially pasta made with white flour soda pop coke pepsi mountain dew candy i mean Packaged cereals are the worst. And we feed our kids these to start their day at school. And we wonder why we have problems. So we have sugars, we have all different types. So I just wanna make some clarification. So dextrose, fructose, and glucose are all considered monosaccharides. They are known as simple sugars. The primary difference between them is how your body metabolizes them. Glucose and dextrose are essentially the same sugar. Our body runs on glucose. Everything, everything on this earth runs on glucose. Well, not your car, but every living thing runs on glucose. Foods manufactured usually were dextrose in their ingredient list. I have an ingredient list of the, I have the 60 names for sugar. If you want that, put that in the chat and we will email that to you tomorrow. Because when you go shopping, I want you to pick up cans and, and the, the boxes and read the labels. Because they're not going to just say, it has table sugar in it. No, they're going to use dextrose and all these different names that you may not even know that are just another name for sugar. So I'm trying to educate you so you don't make these mistakes again. So in the form, this is glucose is a form of energy you're designed to run on. Every cell in your body, every bacterium, in fact, every living thing on the earth actually uses glucose for energy. It's stored as glycogen inside your cells. So when you when you exercise, you break it down. And that produces adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and then lactic acid. Um, so that is what you know, gives you the muscle soreness after you work out. So the simple sugars can combine to form uh, complex sugars like disaccharide sucrose, which is table sugar, which is half glucose and half fructose. Then we have sugar alcohols. That's your xylitol, your glycerol, your sorbitol, malitol, mannitol, and ethyltol. And these are not, not sugars or they're not alcohols. They're becoming really popular in, you know, uh, like candies and gums um, as a sweetener. They're not completely absorbed so uh, by the small intestine. So they can cause a few issues. You may not have the calories, but you can have bloating, diarrhea, and flatulence. So it's a trade-off. Um, I don't do well. I, a friend of mine said, hey, why don't you try xylitol? I use that in my coffee. So I'm like, okay, I start trying it. So of course I buy the five pound bag because that's just what I do. And I'm having coffee every morning. I'm thinking my stomach was just, I've been having this terrible gut wrenching pain and just a terrible time in the bathroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? And it dawned on me, the only thing that I had changed is the xylitol. So I gave that to my friend who uses it. She it gets along fine with her. So you could try it, but you know, I be fair warned. Sucralose. And, and it cracks me up because on the package, it says made from sugar. So it tastes like sugar. It's not at all that. It's not a sugar, it's, it's not, a, it's a, despite its sugar-like name, it's a very deceptive marketing slogan. Um, it's chlorinated artificial sweetener in line with aspartame and it's uh, determined a health risk. So it reduces the amount of good bacteria in your gut by 50% per packet, per packet. It increases your pH in your intestines, slowing down your digestion, contributes to uh, increase of body weight. Um, it's also considered hepatoxic and nephrotoxic, meaning dangerous to the toxic to the liver and to the kidney. 7% um, of Splenda remains in your system five days after consumption. So continued consumption can lead to long-term kidney disease. Agave, so that was another, this is in the health food store. It's um, always advertised as natural. Well, it's typically highly processed, usually 80 to 90% fructose. It, the end product doesn't even resemble the original agave plant. And as you know from me, if you're gonna have agave, the only agave is in tequila. So reserve it for that. Honey, you can use honey, but not on the, this 10 day program. We're trying to get your system down. These are my bees and my honey. It's how dark that honey in, it was delish. 50% uh, fructose, completely natural, natural form. A lot of health benefits, almost the same as amount of uh, antioxidants as spinach, but you wanna use it sparingly. Stevia, another one you can use. So. I like stevia, it's a highly sweet herb. Uh, it's highly sweet herb. I've actually brought the herb into class when I teach to let everybody, I grew it, to let everybody taste it. And you know, it's really funny. You watch them put it in the mouth, they're like, oh, oh, it's so sweet. So it's a leaf from a South American stevia plant. 
Uh, it's completely safe, all natural. So make sure when you eat your stevia, get it in the raw. Um, and then monk fruit. Monk fruit's another one that's been, you've noticed that a little bit more on the scene of things. Um, it's in the Veggie Pro. So it sweetens the Veggie Pro without raising the glycemic index. It's a Lohan Gao, which is a small green melon. It's from south, southern China. It was named that after the monks who first cultivated it. That's hence the name monk fruit. Um, it's, the extract is 150 to 250 times sweeter than table sugar. Has zero calories and carbs, does not raise your blood glucose levels. And that's the key thing for, um, stevia does a little bit, but the monk fruit does not. That's why they use it in the Veggie Pro. Um, so it doesn't have an aftertaste. So a lot of people like that better. So high fructose corn syrup. Uh, most of you are probably not doing uh, um, sugary drinks, any kind of uh, Pepsi Coke, whatever. You've seen my displays in the office. So you know how much sugar's in things. And if you haven't quit already, it will be quitting. You'll be quitting today. 55% um, fructose, 45% glucose. 73 grams per day is what the typical person gets from a sweet drink. If I'm not drinking them and you're not drinking them, somebody's drinking our share. And I see, when I stop to get gas sometimes, I see the, our, our police department with their big you know, uh, belts on and their big uh, the vest, protect, uh, you know, bulletproof vest, and they're you know, humongous. And they're going in with their igloo cooler with the handle on it and filling it up in the Coke machine. And it's like, you know, here, this is part of the problem, you know, so, you know, upsize me or, you know, make it bigger and, you know, the bigger, the freer, but the sicker we get. So 25% of people actually consume more than 130 grams of fructose a day because they're consuming ours. Um, and the very most, you know, popular products that's put in are the fat-free foods. So two reasons why we don't want to use high fructose corn syrup is because it's so damaging. It metabolizes fructose in a much different way than glucose. The entire burden of metabolizing that high fructose corn syrup is on the liver. So we want to, you know, that's what, like I said, that's why we get that, you know, ring of belly fat around us. Uh, people are consuming fructose in large quantities, and that's uh, just makes a, a negative effect on the body. And you can kind of see from the picture here. Um, so 60 pounds. So consumption of high fructose corn syrup in the U.S. has grown up to 60 pounds per person per year. How much is 60 pounds? It's roughly 5.3 gallons. High fructose corn syrup is a clear liquid. So that's a lot. So I mean, we've just really increased year after year after year. So the muscles use the glucose, but the liver is the only one that can um, uh, actually metabolize that uh, fructose. And it's in foods. So when you go look at your refrigerator door tonight, look at your ketchup, look at your pickles, look at your dressings, uh, look at your drinks, you, you, just in your door. I mean, I thought our door was really clean and I pulled out something and it was in pickles, pickles. So please clean out. I mean, we don't have that in our refrigerator now. I and mean, we, you know, if you want to do ketchup, you can do ketchup with a little bit of, it has just a, a they'll have some um, that are sweetened with a little bit of uh, cane sugar, which is fine, but you don't want the high fructose corn sugar. sugar. It's 1.6 times sweeter than sugar. So it's really gets that addiction in there, but it's in cereals and your candies, tomato soup. Um, I'm a big tomato soup fan. I always did Campbell's till I found that out. So now I use Amy's tomato soup. I like it better. So it's in your yogurt. So it's in just everywhere. So you make yourself read the label and you use the foods that don't have that in there. So 55% of those sweeteners used in food and beverage are manufactured from corn. That's the number one source of calories in America is soda. So, and our government subsidizes corn. So we can literally say the government makes us fat. Did you want to say that? So we call this the Coca-Cola conspiracy. I, I call it that. So, you know, when we first started out in 1915, you know, it, we got 6.5 ounce bottles. And then in 1955, we got 10 ounce bottles. And then in 1960, we got 12 ounce cans. And then in 1988, we got the 44 ounce, you know, big drink, big gulp. And now we have the 20 ounce. So each of these tells you how many pounds a year that person will have. Here's your formula. One can of soda a day is 150 calories times 365 days per year plus 3,500 calories per pound equals 15 pounds per year. So if you drink one soda a day, you can gain 15 pounds. So if you're drinking soda and you just put the soda and not replace it with something else other than water, you could lose 15 pounds. And then I have my patients say, oh, but I drink diet soda. Well, aspartame crosses the blood-brain barrier. 
the same danger we have with the COVID virus. The COVID virus crosses the blood-brain barrier. It's the only virus that does that. If it crosses the blood-brain barrier, that's our very protection for our brain. So um, yeah, it's toxic to the brain cells. So it basically kills our brain. So who needs that? And you know, we've all done it. I did. I did coke, you know, diet cokes and stuff in the past. I probably haven't had a coke for probably. Uh, it's got to be at least 30 years now. 20, 25, 30 years. Um, toxic to brain cells. If you drink two diet sodas a day, it can lead to a 50, 500 percent greater increase in waist size, and it actually fools your uh, pancreas to think it's sugar, and it'll actually make you insulin resistant. So that's even more scarier. And uh, one of the harmful breakdowns of the product is formaldehyde which is a uh, known carcinogenic, so don't do it. So when we look at weight balance, we look at weight in and out, calories in, calories out, if it's equal, we maintain our weight. If we, uh, our calories in is higher and our calories out is, I mean, our calories out is lower, or bigger, sorry, calories in lower, calories out higher, that's weight loss, and if it's the opposite, it's weight gain. So, but it does matter what kind of calories we do eat. So this is an image from Google, and those are not my teeth impressions, but half a Reese's peanut butter cup is 44 calories. A head of broccoli is 50 calories. So you can see the nutrition rich and fiber dense foods are so much more better for us. All right, so if you walk or mile, run a mile, it burns approximately 100 calories. So if you walk two miles, then go to Starbucks and have a grande combo macchiato, you've out eaten or drank your exercise because it's 250 calories. So eating just 100 calories more than you need per day for one year, you gain 10 pounds. And you can see here to the left when you compare carrots to chips and grapes to honey bun and apples. So you have so much more food because it's fiber rich and nutrition dense. Drink your water, exercise every day. I take a day off. I took a day off today. I did go for a little walk this morning, but I did 350 miles last week, so I can take a day off. But I recommend everybody do at least 30 something minutes a day, 30 to 45 minutes a day, walking, stretching, yoga, whatever. And here's your plan of action. First, go to your refrigerator when we're done here. Get rid of all your sugar liquids in the house, read your labels. Number two, clean out the high fructose corn syrup in the refrigerator. If it's not open, take it to your food pantry. I feel bad about even doing that. Maybe one of my patients suggested dumping it out on weeds to maybe kill the weeds and then recycle the key in. I'm like, that's a great idea. Uh, provide carbohydrates, which are fiber dense and nutrient rich. You've heard me say that many, many times now. Wait 20 minutes before your second serving. So your brain has time to know you even ate. And then also uh, start moving. Your goal is 10,000 steps every day. And buy local and organic, support our local farmers. This is your food pyramid that should be, not the one that's, that's advertised. So your challenge is on. It's only for 10 days. We will see you next week, same bat time and same bat channel. So uh, we'll be at 6.30 on Zoom. You'll get the link on Monday morning. Tomorrow morning, I'll send you the uh, results of the, I mean, the, the recording of, the, of tonight. See you next week.